really went right back to your first game. Here we are. I mean, literally, that's Dalvin Cook back there. You know, in a traditional Kirk Cousins under center, back is eight yards deep. Kind of take us through what you see and what your process is. Well, it looks like we're in a one-back, one-gap defense right here, so I have the A-gap. But technically, if a defensive lineman gets cut out of his gap, well, I'm not just going to stay in my A-gap and be like, well, I had the A-gap pre-snap, and just because he got in my <laughs> gap means, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be wrong. You, you got to just play ball. You know, you, my uh, D'Amico Ryan, my, my linebacker coach, always said, don't play like a robot, you know, be a ball player. So that's exactly what happens right here. You know, Defoe, an outstanding athlete, outstanding player for our defense. Uh, you know, he tries to dip inside to make a play, gets cut out, so I have to replace him right away. And I'm just I'm just literally playing running back. It's me and Dalvin Cook, both playing running back. So I'm looking for the open hole. And as soon as Dalvin commits to that that open B gap, then I'm just falling right where he is. That's linebacker playing right here. I didn't really even know what I was doing. I'm just playing, you know, I'm just playing <laughs> ball. Like I it's literally my first game playing Mike Backer and I'm just kinda it was just, you know, all all instincts and I've I've been able to learn since then, but um, you know, it was, it was fun making a couple plays in this game. Since you're the Mike linebacker, you're playing right in the middle of the field. Does that mean you have a gap right and a gap left? So no matter which side the ball goes to, you assume the gap to that side. And are you the only player defensively that, that has to kind of play a gap on each side because you're sitting there in the middle? Oh, well, I actually only have one gap, one A gap, because that defensive lineman is going to be in the opposite A gap, right? And it's pretty easy for me. I get lined up. I'm, I'm in that open gap that the defensive lineman's not in, and I know that whatever the defensive lineman's in, okay, boom, he has that gap. And then especially in our defense, we keep things super simple, and it's usually, you know, if, it's one, if there's one back in the backfield, that means that we have one gap in our defense. It's just playing ball, and you, you got to just feel I'm just playing him inside out and obviously making contact right there uh, in the backfield. Right in the middle, number 48, as he just goes right through the gap and is able to make the nice tackle. Is it meat ball, hit ball, and you just tackle however you tackle? Or do you actually have time to process who I'm playing against and when you're getting to the ball, changing a tackling technique or where you're hitting a guy uh, no, not really. You know, it's it probably easier to say like, oh, yeah, I'm going to tackle Derrick Henry like this and I'm going to tackle, you know, Dalvin Cook like this. But at the end of the day, you got to bring it. you got to bring it every single play, every single rep, every single tackle. And, I, you know, that's something that I've had to work on, you know, over the three years and becoming a better tackler and, and securing tackles, making sure I'm wrapping up and driving my legs through contact. Um, you know, but you want to impose your will on your opponent, right? You don't want to just you don't want to just drag guys to the ground and have them carry for five yards. You want to be knocking guys back. And so that's what I've been continuing to, to work on and improve upon. Let's pick this up right here against Cleveland. It's just basically an outside zone. So just staying alive on this outside zone where, you know, the, the, both the receiver and the guard are both coming at you and just trying to keep that outside arm free. Exactly. And so, I mean, that's, this was the great part about, uh, you know, just using your hands. And I could have even been better, but I seen the, the receiver coming at me initially. And, you know, anytime a receiver tries to block a linebacker, that's, that's a big no-no. You got to let them know right away that you're not coming in here. You're not about to block a linebacker. Nope. Hey. Better watch out, man. You get, hey, if you get in here with a big dog, you better watch out. I wanted him, even though I didn't really necessarily have to make contact with Jarvis right here, I wanted to let him you know, feel my presence. And then that allowed me to now get uh, outside leverage on the guard. And, you know, I could have had more extension from, from the block point, but able to still use my hands to create that separation, get off and make a tackle while still trying to, you know, punch at the ball and make a, make a play right there. But, you know, outside zone, you got, that's, that's our bread and butter. If they're, if they're running outside zone with one bag, you gotta, you gotta eat that up. Cause we're playing an eight man box. Um, every gap is accounted for, and you just gotta play your gap and make a play. Great play by Fred Warner. He tried to double team him and stay foot with foot and, and pace for pace with Chubb down the sideline. Great job by Freddie Warner. When I watch you, you do a tremendous job. You know, sometimes there'll be guys moving all over the place and, and you don't move. What does that mean to you with the, the nature of the where the NFL has gone? So right there, I'm thinking they're in a bunch that if one of those guys in the bunch motions over, I know that our safeties are rocking and rolling and me and Quan are staying in our same, same exact gap, so I don't have to move. And 
if I had not been thinking that ahead of time, I might have snapped my eyes over there and saw OBJ motioning over, and that would have been a second slower, right? But instead, I already knew he was going, so I just kept my eyes on the back, key in the back, feeling the line coming off hard, be able to get my, my shuffle steps in and, and get that leverage right away on the blockers. Hey, Fred, just take us through that the terminology of rocking and rolling the safeties. Well, yeah, so it, usually in our defense, in our, our zone coverage, our cover three defense, we play an eight-man box, which means we have four linemen and four guys off the ball, two linebackers, one of nickels and one safety. So right here, we initially we started with Jimmy coming down uh, to the three receiver side as our fourth man. But as soon as they jet Odell Beckham to the left, now we're rocking and rolling, like I said, which means uh, that safety's now going back, playing middle third, and the other safety's running down and playing that outside number four defender off the ball. That keeps our gap integrity to be able to play one back, one gap defense, like, like I said. I told you guys yet that Fred Warner is one of my favorite players. Woohoo! Read up real quick. Hey, right, let's go. Hey, one play at a time, man. Over communicate. Over communicate. One play at a time. Let's dominate. When I listen to you and wired, the times you've been wired and whatnot, that's who you are. Like you super communicate. You you talk during a play. Hey, you got him. You got him. Hey, Larry Quinn. Hey, Larry Quinn. Hey, it's not right, it's not right, it's not right. Yo, you might have one. Come here. Come here. Yeah, Dre! There we go, boy. Going from one side to the other in the backfield, and you're giving a signal right here. It's some kind of a just pre-snap check. What might you be doing just alerting the other guys at the linebacking core? With cut-ups and what the coaches were, were telling us throughout the week, and something I've learned, you know, now being going into my fourth year is, uh, you know, offenses play copycat ball a lot. They run a lot of the sim a lot of similar concepts, right? So if they're shifting it back from a three by one set to now a load set where the, the running back is included in that four uh, four by one, it's usually a screen. It's usually a screen or a run. And so right here, that's probably what I was learning too. Probably something I remember, you know, Coach Ryan saying to me, and I was just pops into my head, you know, that's, that's kind of what happens sometimes in games. Like, I just get an epiphany real quick of something I've seen either on tape or I've heard, and then just kind of just one, two, three, and things, you know, things move like that, so. Way to work the word epiphany into that phrase right there, Fred. That's a good job by you. Watch this joker right here. I love watching him play football. Fred Warner, sideline to sideline when they need big plays the most. He's the guy game after game, time after time, the leader of this defense, the smart guy out there. That was a huge play. You, you know, because we see all this pre-snap motion, does it get to that point where if you know the formation in your mind, Fred, you pretty much know the play that's coming? Uh, yeah, depending on what the down and distance is. You know, right here, third and short, and they're in a bunch set out of the gun. You know they're passing the ball one, and you know you probably can guess the, the route concept, too. So, and usually on third and short, it's out of a bunch set, they're trying to run a spot concept. And so, spot concept is where they're trying to have the point man right here in that bunch run an in route. A guy runs to the flat, and a guy run right over the football. And so, knowing that, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's a bunch that I need to make sure I'm getting one yard outside that point. And as long as I drop about five yards, one yard outside that point, there's going to be somebody coming into my area. And so that's exactly what my, my thought process is pre-snap. And so that's exactly where I get to post-snap and you see exactly where I'm going and there's a receiver right there. So uh, that's exactly what happened on this play. And that's why I was able to get in a position to, to cover that route, I, I believe. So He tried to unload it out there to the flat on the 49ers sideline. And Freddie Warner was just all over it, getting himself a pass breakup. Three and out. Nice job. Are, are you saying that offenses are that predictable? Come on, Fred. Really? Like, you know what play is coming? <laughs> Come on, we got to have a couple compliments in there. Get, give, give us a little credit. Listen, you know, I, I feel like offenses all run the same stuff, so it, <laughs> it's hard for me to it's hard for me to give out compliments, you know. But uh, you know, it, you got you got uh, you got a lot of uh, you know up and coming offensive coordinators stuff who love to mix things up and, and mess with your eyes. You know, I hate going against you know the Rams or Kansas City. You know, teams that like to do all this pre motion. Uh, movement to get your eyes moving one way, get you going another way. and uh, But at the end of the day, they're all running the same exact stuff post-snap. So you just got to get your eyes in the right spot. Let's go get the rock. 
We need to rock. Set. Drop back, drop to the throw. It's intercepted by Fred Warner. He will run back the other way. A lot of teams are trying to find the next Fred Warner. You know, I mean, they're out there scouting and your ability in the passing game just to get in the passing lanes, to read the quarterback. I mean, all of the things that it takes place on this play right here. Just tell us, like, does it look as easy as it is here, Fred, or what all goes into this? <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the answer you probably don't want to hear is, yeah, but it, it, it kind of truly is. You make plays when you're just doing your job, right? And that's exactly what I was doing right here. We're in a man coverage. Everybody's locked up. I have the back. And instead of me just running down there full speed to try and get to him because I'm scared, I'm just, I'm playing off, I'm hovering. And this is a two minute situation and Goff knows that he's either gonna take his read initially or he's gotta drop it down to the flat and try and uh, get the back and get out of bounds and, and save some clock. So, you know, me hovering off allowed him to kind of feel like, oh, I still got the back, but I was close enough to obviously make the play and make the interception to take it home. Your prep for man coverage. Does it change? Because I notice here, right on the snap, you're attacking down at the running back. Instead of going lateral and making sure that he doesn't get behind you, you are attacking him to get closer to his body. Does that change based on schemes that you play against, players that you play against, or is your mindset just, hey, the closer I can get to him, I want to cut down that space to make it easier on me? How does that preparation go when we're talking about specifically man coverage for you? I mean, it's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. And so ultimately, if I'm one-on-one -on -one with the offensive player, I'm trying to reduce that amount of space uh, as much as I can to make that easier on me ultimately. Because what the offensive player wants is space to be able to kind of juke guys, um, you know, especially when you're dealing with shifty or back, you, you got to reduce that space. And so that's exactly what I'm doing right here. But I left enough space for Jared to think that, oh, I still have my throw, you know, so he threw a bad ball. But yeah, I'm trying to reduce that space between me and the running back. What did I just talk about? Man coverage. That swing route, Fred had it, was on his horse, undercut it. And it's Warner who read it beautifully. And this place is rocking and rolling. Give me Watson, right here. Two minutes to go. Big third down. Vikings get a first. The game's over. Cousins. Four man rush. Pressure throws. Incomplete. Warner was there. Just right here, Fred. Like, I, I think you're probably in some kind of zone coverage, but you know, you get Rudolph coming across the middle, and you can see him making the dig move. Cousins is watching him. Like, at what point is this? Is this man coverage? Is this zone that becomes man? Just like just spot drop? Take us through just what happens on this play. Yeah, so I think I actually this might have been a, a busted coverage on my part, but it happened out. It happened to like just play out the right way. I'm a weak hook defender right here, so I should technically be outside that right hash. If we're looking from the offensive perspective, that right hash, I should be outside of that one yard if we're talking, you know, just technical terms, but I believe this was a third and short situation. And I know they were playing quick game all game long, right? They're running shorter routes to try and get Kirk easy throws. This would have been much easier had I been on my spot, but I think there would have been even more space in the middle of the field for, for them to do a quicker catch and throw if, had I played it the way technically I was supposed to play it. So I'm actually glad I played it the way I did. And, you know, I used a little savvy little move right there and hooked his outside hit with my left, my left hand to try and slingshot and get in front. I was, I was upset I didn't uh, pick this one off, but, you know, just to get the PBU right there, that was uh, big for third down. I heard that. You grabbed his tip and you slingshotted yourself. That should be a penalty, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> I got these offensive ears, Fred. Offensive ears. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the offense always wants to want the pass up here call right. He undercut that route, reads it perfectly, and is able to get his hands on it. Almost picked it right off his fingertips. I want to jump ahead to Super Bowl 54, if that's okay. Motion, they're going to roll, patch it for Holmes right. He'll lock up and throw a bullet. It's intercepted by Fred Warner. 
world. Best in the world. I know. Best in the world. Come on, come on, watch Like this interception right here, Fred. Like I noticed the tight end is staying in the block, and I didn't know if that affected your drop right there and your responsibility right away on this play. Him staying in and blocking didn't affect my drop because I'm already right here. I'm a, I'm a hook defender, right? It's third and forever. And ultimately, I'm just trying to get in the in what we call the dig window, which is about 15 yards deep, one yard outside the hash. And uh, that's where a lot of offenses run, run different route contests in that window. And so I don't know anything was going on behind me right here. I have full eyes on Patrick Mahomes. So I'm just kind of just flowing with Pat. I see he rolls out, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm moving more towards the sideline as he rolls out. But then as soon as he throws that ball, you know, I'm tracking the football and I take those two shovel steps back inside, and w which allows me to get in position to make the play. When you say, Fred, you don't really know what's going on behind you, is it just a trust? Is it going back to your instincts? Well, right here, this is a very unique play that they pulled out of their, their bag of tricks because I don't know what you would call this route. Tyree goes and runs a corner post curl sit at about 20 yards. Right. You know, he initially breaks to the corner, breaks back to the post, and curls up at 20 yards on the 40-yard line right there. I don't know what that route is called. If, if there's a name for it, <laughs> right. I haven't heard of it. Hey, he ran. He ran. Seven. Yeah, I didn't oh, know what he was running. Oh, oh, yes. So that's what I mean by what I'm saying. I don't know what's going on behind me because that's, that's about 20 yards deep. But right here, I took a peek out to number one. He sat down. And so I don't know what number two is doing. I don't know what Tyreek's doing. So I'm just kind of just playing in my zone, reading Patrick Mahomes' eyes. And he brought me to exactly where I needed to be to make that play. So Fred, on your drop, when you say you're feeling routes, are you feeling that, in this case, Tyreek goes outside of you? So you'll flow more with him? How do you determine where exactly you go in your zone coverages? I think a lot of it is determined by the down and distance. So right here, it's third and forever. Had it been third and five or third and six to 10, my drop would have been completely different than it is right now because if I'm dropping back to 15 yards deep, they're gonna throw something right underneath me for 10 yards to pick up a first down. So that's why I'm able to drop as far as I am because I understand, well, in order for them to get a first down, they have to catch a ball that's gotta be, you know, very deep. But since it is max protection with the tight end, Everything was telling me that, listen, they're throwing something deep. Get your butt back into your drop and, and ultimately get underneath something to, to make a play. What a terrific play. Fred gets to his landmark, eyes on the quarterback. Your best drop of the season. That was beautiful. That was beautiful.